Hello, I'm John Dennison, Chairman of the World Rugby Memorial Project and with me today I have uh, Laureen Fabrier and Brian Rolfe. Laureen is um, a member of the team here at the historical Grand Guerre Museum in Peron and Brian is our World Rugby Memorial Ambassador from the Royal Hospital Chelsea. Uh, just going to sort of have a general discussion looking at the idea of um, education, remembrance, how that ties together with the events that we run, uh, particularly with the Rugby Memorial, which is a sports-based um, theme. So, Lorraine, just would you like to just tell us a little bit more about yourself and the role that you play here yes. in Peron? Uh, so, I work here since 10 years ago. Um, I also work at Thiepval Memorial, Thiepval Museum. Um, I'm a, a guide here. So, I, for example, I, uh, I do guide tour for students, but also adults here inside the museum, but also on the Remembrance Trail. And uh, we also create some animation for children, adults, and things like that inside the museum to help them to understand what is inside the museum and about the history of the First World War. Indeed, and, and the fact we're here in Peron, of course, we're right in the heart of the Somme yes. region, aren't we? Uh, and this is the department that really a lot of people associate with World War I. Yes, because we have many events here during the First World War and also the Battle of the Somme and we have a lot of place uh, near Peron and also insta on inside the area. So a lot of people from everywhere in the world come here to, to visit and it's really interesting because we, we discover a lot and we learn a lot also with, pe with people. Indeed, indeed. And Brian, um, as I said, Royal Hospital Chelsea. Now, anybody viewing this discussion um, and anywhere around the world, I'm sure, is familiar with the Royal Hospital Chelsea itself. And um, just tell us a little bit about the Royal Hospital. And Royal Hospital been going for 330 years. It looks after old soldiers of the British Army, um, basically, until we uh, turn our toes up. Um, <laughs> It's got a, a major place in the nation's heart because they all recognise the scarlet coats that the pensioners wear from the Festival of Remembrance. They see them at the Cenotaph. Um, I think that the thing that I get involved with and want to bring out is the fact that the human race is great at, making, at repeating its mistakes. And if we look at the, the two great wars that have been in this area, unless we learn from it, we're not going to be able to avoid them. But if we can educate the children and show them just exactly what, and I don't want to use the horrors of war, but what war means and the, the price that's paid, then we're, we're achieving something. And if we can do that through sport, draw the youngsters over here for the sport that they love, rugby, and while they're here, enjoying their rugby, give them an idea of what war means. Then that education and bringing in remembrance is, is making a worthwhile impact on young lives for the future. And if only one of them goes forward and becomes a member of parliament or the government in his own country and acts sensibly with, with a, not pacifist, but a, with a a view to avoiding conflict, then we've achieved a great deal. Indeed. That, that's what I look at. Indeed. And, I mean, you, you mentioned the rugby, and again, um, one of the reasons we're here this, this week is for the annual Armistice International Youth Rugby Festival, which is based in Compiègne. Um, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that later on. Um, but... What we try and do, uh, which I always feel is important, is to combine an activity. And now that activity could be sported, it could be music, it could be uh, just purely educational. But then link it with uh, a, a main education element and then bring in the remembrance side as well. And I think that's how people begin to uh, draw their own conclusions from what they see on the ground, isn't it? And I mean, do you find that when you do your tour? Yes, uh, also because if we just talk about 
purely history to young students, they will maybe be interesting, but it's not as it's not really fun for for them. But if you talk about history with games and activity and things that they like, they will be maybe much more interested in the subject. Subject, for example, if they love to play rugby in their everyday life, and if you just tell them, oh, you like it, but do you know that during the first world war and after you can talk about war and remembrance also, so it's a good thing to to take every aspect of the subject to to help us to interesting them in, on the, the subject and the first world war also. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that, that we tend to do when we have visiting groups, we have lots of discussions in the background before they come. And uh, a lot of research also takes place. And we frequently find a story linked to a club, a school, yes. university or an association. And, and then we can actually take those people to that place where their uh, former school pupils yes now is, uh, you know, who lost his life in World War One, And th there's a huge emotional connection, yes. is what I tend to find as well. Yes, because also if you just, if you tell them how many people died during the First World War, they will be impressed by this number. Mm. But also if you tell, you see, this man, if you talk about his life, they will sometimes maybe identify as his hobby or things like that. And we, when you will take this example, it will make it much more important for, for them, maybe, or they will also keep in mind these things. Um, what we see also is that people always remember the little stories, the uh, everyday life story that we can tell them about the First World War. So, because it's things that they, they can link with their life also. So, it's really interesting and important also to, 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 to take that kind of example. Absolutely. And, and Brian, just sort of moving across, and let's just take that rugby angle mm -hmm. between us. I mean, both you and I, great enthusiasts <laughs> for the game. But we unveiled the World Rugby Ball itself on the 16th of September 2016 on the battlefields of the Chemin des Dam. And people often ask me, well, why there? And the very simple answer is the first four internationals killed in World War One, out of a total of 133 internationals were killed on the Chemin des Dam. And that's in fact uh, in that particular area uh, between 1914 and 1918, there was actually 15 internationals in total, 12 of which were French, two from Scotland and one from England. Um, and it developed a theme uh, as to why we chose that as a location um, for the memorial itself. And bringing you in, Brian, with the Royal Hospital Chelsea hat on, mm. um, we invited you to become our first project ambassador back in 2019. And how, how, how have you seen that role develop that, over the last few years? Uh, it, first of all, the idea of being an ambassador was alien to me anyway. <laughs> um, what really brought it home to me was almost two years later at a match in uh, in Twickenham and I was escorting another pensioner who's not so good on his pins and a, a young boy grabbed hold of not a young boy a teenager grabbed hold of me and said you're him it's you. You, you 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 were a compien and it was a boy from Breda in Holland who recognized me from then and had to have that impact on a boy, especially a teenager, that they don't forget you and they remember the things that you've said, means that the role of ambassador is much, much greater than I ever imagined it to be. Um, I get invitations back to schools um, and to rugby clubs because boys remember me. And, and th th there's even one club who their under 16s team have got a teddy bear dressed up as a Chelsea pensioner, which is called Little Brian, and it's the team <laughs> captain's job to make sure that it goes to every away match. So the impact that it's had is far wider and far greater than I ever realised. Um, and it, 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 it's humbling that, that people 
feel that way. Um, the boys, they've heard all the, all, all the huge figures of casualties. But when we can bring it down to them and say, look, at the First World War, a whole rugby team, all 15 of them, together went down to the enlistment office and enlisted in a unit. And then they fought together and a lot of them died. To give that, I mean, uh, take the Devonshire Trench. That, that, that people won't know about it, but it, it's... Well, it's just that still, part of my mates, isn't it, Brian? It, it, and it, it's all part of the sum. And all of those men came from very much the same area. And they're in two long lines of men that died. All of them, all their families, they all knew each other. That kind of spirit of comradeship and um, the, the cohesion of a rugby club brought in to a, a, a military unit and they begin to understand why, why did these men go over the top? Well, because the scrum half and the, the front row went over the top as well. So the whole team goes together. The same with the, with the armed forces because the, the, they wouldn't have a, a concept of it now at their age. Later on in life, I, I, I'm sure that they will. But if we can use rugby as a vehicle to, to draw them in to remembrance and to understanding of what it all means, then that's, that's the primary goal. At the end of it, they go away. And I'd like to think that they're the comradeship, the cohesion of their team is that much more because they've seen that it's not something new, it's something that's gone on for the best part of a hundred years and th that it, it did good then and it'll do good now. So it's, it's a torch, it's something deep in your heart, it, 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 it covers so many different facets of human existence, let alone anything else. So it, it, I, I, I can't explain it anymore. Um, it, it, it's deep inside me. I feel it all the time when I'm with the boys, when I'm at rugby matches. And, um, well, long may it continue. Yeah, I mean, I to... yeah, I mean look, looking slightly deeper on, into the rugby angle, um, it, it is uh, very much that um, a lot of the officer class were at private schools. Um, so therefore they had leadership roles. But also you had icons like Ronnie Porton Palmer, mm. the England captain, who was very much the pit-up boy of the sport um, back in 1930, 1914, and seen as a great leader. And people will follow through... You know, they will enlist, they will be part of that uh, company uh, unit or regiment, whatever, and they will follow these heroes mm -hmm. uh, as such. So that was, that was another big link yeah, going it, back. It, the problem is society has changed a great deal since then, John. Yeah. And the, 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 um, the upper class leader doesn't exist anyway. I mean, in the army... You, you tend to lead on merit and I mean it's probably no surprise to people that if the officer's no good it's the sergeants and the warrant officers that get the unit to do what's needed and they're the people that follow. It, it, it's more competency based now than it was then and it, it, it's the change in society which is quite incredible um, from the serf with his his sickle over his shoulder that the Lord of the Manor said we're going to war and that's what that's what he took as a weapon to the modern day soldier the, the, the change in society over that period of time is absolutely amazing and the same would probably I mean I can't imagine a situation where if I didn't do what I was told I would be shot yet yes men here were told over the top you go and if you didn't go over the top then you were just likely to be shot in the trench oh. by your own NCOs because discipline had to be maintained. And we, we've seen it with the men that were shell-shocked and mentally destroyed
who were put up in front of a post and shot to encourage the others. That kind of thing doesn't happen now. What we try to do is we use the team spirit to get the unit to be effective, just the same as we do in rugby. And it, it, it's... I, don't, I, I, I can't explain it any day, but it, it's something that, for a serviceman, for a, for a sportsman, should be ingrained. It, 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 it's that kind of thing that you, you're all for the team to move the team forward, and that's rugby. Loyalty to your friends, loyalty to the club, and do your damnedest. But at the end of the day, your best is what we're looking for, and it will always be accepted as that. And, and also, uh, when um, troops were then uh, taken out of the front line, um, many a time, and we got many a record of this as well, that um, you have various football matches, rugby games, and even cricket matches. Uh, so there's a lot of sports at place behind the lines. And there was almost international games between some of the countries as well. Um, and of course, there was very famously in 1917 in Paris, the match between uh, France and what was nicknamed the Trench Blacks. Uh, New Zealand uh, was known as the All Blacks. Well, these guys came out of the trenches and played this game. And um, literally came out of the trenches, played the match in Paris, and then went back to war. I mean, it's hard to get your head around, isn't yeah. it, these days? But, I mean, it's that kind of comradeship that um, the, the sport brings out. Um, and I would sort of suggest that education-wise, that you're trying, to, you're, you're trying to inspire people to think as an individual, but also think as a group as well. Yes. And, and sort of let ideas... You know, bounce around between people. When, so when you're presenting yes. um, your tours, and you're looking for um, it's almost like a, a common denominator, a point where they can all progress together with their knowledge. Yes, because um, when we well, we have scholar, scholar groups, <laughs> uh, we we try to to find the the subject that will interest them and for example um, I always tell inside when I do my, my trail that even if they don't really like history at first mm. if they like sport, if they like music, fashion, if they like reading um, comics for example, they can still find some things uh, a link with the First World War because every part of the society has been impacted by this war so if they want to, to learn much more about the First World War through the, the sport, it's good, it's okay. The most important thing is to, to learn about the, 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 the history, the First World War, and to, to remember also this war. And the way that you do that, it's, mm, it's less important in the way that the most important is to, to learn and to, to remember. During, during the conflict itself, you, you actually had um, social change yes. as well, um, which had a great impact. But also then uh, there was many, many advances. I mean, OK, we'll take the military advances to one side yes. uh, in the mechanics of, of the Great War. But then if we look at the idea then of uh, medical treatment, which was greatly improved. Lots of new techniques were found yes. as well, wasn't it? Um, th you know, in the various hospitals. Then, as you say, um, it wasn't just sporting people involved. If we take the number of poets that were there, yes. writers uh, as well, artists. Artists. Uh, you know, there, there's people from absolutely all backgrounds, yes. wasn't there? So, in, in, it's trying to interweave and relate yes. those as well, isn't it? And also, it's important for students to once again to link with things that they are doing in their everyday life. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, after school or maybe on Wednesday, they are playing rugby with their friends. So maybe when they will come back and they said, oh, do you know that during the First World War, also rugby men have been involved or things like that. And they will keep remembering when we give this few, this little information, little ID, after they will maybe um, research also by their own and and maybe they will be after um, ambassadors also of this First World War, of the remembrance of the First World War. So yeah. it's important to just put a seed about this, this war in their head and 
after they will make it grow and talk also about it. Yeah, and, and specific what, what I do, what, how I see my role uh, as someone who organises events and creates events uh, to bring people together. Uh, I see it more as a community type project than anything else and uh, engage in community I think from the younger age group going through now I think is where the strength lies uh, for the future of you know what we've learnt over the years you know ourselves and the thoughts that we've developed and that we're trying to pass on and trying to pass on these memories um, I mean we use the slogan inspiring future generations so you know when you look at whether it's, it'd be sports or education so um what, what's your thoughts along those lines, Brian? Well, it's the social change that the conflicts bring about. I mean, we're talking, obviously, the First World War is quite important because of where we are. Yeah. But you mentioned the social change that took part in the First World War. Look at the Second World yes. War. Yes. Mm. After the Second World War, women suddenly had a place in the workplace. They, they, the women's movement as such exploded and at the same time we've now got young girls playing rugby alongside the boys and 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 learning the sport and being drawn into it so that it, it it's it's all encompassing and there's more females in the military as well yeah. not just in the uk but in france and <laughs> many countries yes now. but it, it brings about social change it makes people stop and think from where we are now brian i mean where, where do you where do you see the role of remembrance going forward? Let's say if we roll this forward 10, 20, even 50 years from now, I mean, how, how can we keep people engaged? Unfortunately, I, I suspect that conflict will be what keeps the people engaged. And I don't know, I don't know what the solution will be other than to try to teach people that nations go to the war, but does it solve anything? And the answer is no. It's after the war, when the, I don't want to say level-headed, but the, the, when the, the, the saner members of society get together and try to avoid it happening again, then things last that bit, that bit longer. But I, I, remembrance is the one thing that pulls it all together. You know, if you, I mean, let's remember back, how far do we have to go back? Mm. I mean, we've got the situation of the Crusades is still being acted out between the Muslim and the Christian, even in, in today's age. And we don't seem to have learned anything. Um, we've got the same situation, religion, with the Jews and the Muslims in Palestine, the Palestinians. Yet both of them preach peace but it's not getting through if we can do it through sport what they can't do through their religions and it it, it it's a win-win situation well, just bring it, more engagement get the like enjoyment yeah. and it's enjoyment rather than duty mm. or um i don't know learning things by rote mm. as, as they do in in the churches and chanting um it's a different move. I mean, it won't work for everybody, but for those who get involved in it and they come here, then it stops them and gives them pause for thought. And as long as they remember even a part of it, then I think we've made them a better citizen than they were before. Before, mm. And that, that will always continue because remember, the, the children that come here are going to be the players of the future who are going to be the coaches that go to look after the children of the future oh. so it's a, it's a continual development yes. and it, yeah. in, in that respect sport will continue therefore the development will continue oh. um if you if you base it all around education in the school how much of what you learned at school do you remember 
30 years down the line. You remember what relates to the job (laughs) or the role that you have in society, (laughs) but just exactly what all the names of the different parts of a plant were. If you're not a botanist, how many people can remember what a pistol is? (laughs) It's that kind of thing. But within sport, it's a feeling inside. It's not what you've got filed away in your memory. It's almost a... What, well, what do they call it? Muscle memory. You, you remember that you're part of a team, that everybody on the team is working towards a goal. And that's, that's got to work through life anyway. So it's a, it's a life's lesson or a lifestyle lesson as well as remembering what went before. And if it all gets jumbled together and it all works its way through in your mind, then that's got to be good. That, that, that's the way forward. Yeah, and I mean, again, sort of in moving forward, um, I mean, we're sitting here in this wonderful museum here in Peron, and there are various other museums and locations around here for people to visit. But where do you see the role of somewhere like the historical museum here in Peron in the future? I am... Um I hope that we, we will still in the future um, be wel- welcoming young students because we have um, students from six years old to university for so from all age and it's important to 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 explain to them what happened and to, to keep talking to them about wars because it's like that that, that they will maybe learn we have to as you said to 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 educate them about this and to teach them and from st- for students who lived near here sometimes they come here with school three times when we are in the primary school college and uh, lycée, the lycée here so uh, they they sometimes they also come back with their family uh, during holidays so it's important to to be still here to to be still here to remember and to say to people, even if it was 100 years ago, we still link some events with uh, mm-hmm. contemporary contemporary events, which are happening nowadays. So it's important to keep in mind keep in mind, sorry, what happened in the past. And yes, I hope we will still be here for people and students and to keep help them to to remember yeah i mean one, one of the things i i say towards the end of an event um so whether or not we've just got one small group or we've got a large group is that having been with us that first of all you've enjoyed yourself which is the, one of the most important things but also that i hope with you you've taken away some new knowledge and combine that with the activities that we share together as well and a lot of the people we have are all aged between, let's say, 15 to 18 as the average uh, age groups that we work with on a regular basis. And I always finish by saying that if you were to come back in 20 years' time, pro- quite probably you'll have your own family, at which point and, uh, someone will say to their children, when I came here to play rugby, I came here to play football, I came here to sing in a school choir. Yes. Um, they can relate that story onto their children and hopefully inspire them um, that when they get to the ages of 15 to 18, they'll be able to come as a group to something. And then another 20 years further down the line, they will say the next thing again. You know, So that, that's kind of my dream or wish. Yes. It- here we are lucky because we are still here when sometimes they come back they come back and sometimes we we do a a remembrance trail with a school and it happened that maybe two or three weeks after we see one one child with his family and because it um, after the trail when he get back home he told his parents what uh, he have seen during the day so few weeks after they come back here so um, it's kind of what you you said because after they will keep in mind because they will have spent family time here uh, uh, learning things and with this kind of memories they will keep always they will always talk about that also and also about this place and the remembrance of the first world war that's absolutely brilliant well Lorraine and Brian 
thank you very much for being our guest this afternoon. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed hearing your thoughts yes. um, during this discussion and we hope that uh, at some point we will inspire other people, yes, next generations, to come and visit. But thank, thank you, you very much. No, I mean, that, John, you, you deserve a great deal of thanks. You and Frank, who basically founded the World Rugby Memorial. And it's, its importance hasn't really, I think, in the world yet been acknowledged. But when we take boys there, that's the only place in the world where you can go and remember all the rugby players. Sure, nations and clubs have got their own memorials to their players. But when you go to the World Rugby Memorial, you're remembering all of the rugby players that have died in the past and are likely to die in the future because that memorial is dedicated to everybody. And again, it, 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 it's bringing people together. And that's down to you and Frank. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. <laughs> anyway, that concludes our discussion for this afternoon. And uh, again, I'd just like to thank Lorene and Brian uh, for being our guest today. Um, this is the first time we've done one of these uh, round table <laughs> discussions. So, and hopefully we'll be able to do some more in the future. But anyway, thank you again. Thank you.